So here's what I want you to think about today. Here's the body. You have the heart, two kidneys, and the bladder. So you have the heart, two kidneys, and the bladder, and this will all make sense as to why I'm bringing this to your attention in a moment. So what I want you to think about is that the heart pumps blood to the kidney, the kidney makes urine that goes to the bladder, and then of course it's exc excreted. So the three organs that we're going to deal with with acute kidney injury are heart, kidney, and everything after kidney, which I'll just call bladder. Okay, so the way that this is broken down is that there are three causes of acute kidney injury. Pre-renal, everything before the kidney, which we're going to really focus on the heart. Intrinsic, which is everything within the kidney itself. And then post-renal, everything after the kidney, which we're going to refer to as bladder. Think about it as a bladder. So again, pre-renal, intrinsic, post-renal, everything before the kidney, heart. Everything inside the kidney, intrinsic. Everything post-renal or after the kidney, bladder. So let's talk about pre-renal first. What are the causes of pre-renal acute kidney injury? Well, we could knock out the heart. So it could be a cardiogenic cause. If you have a massive MI, well, you're going to have a pre-renal kidney injury because the heart can no longer pump blood to the kidney. And as you can see here, I've illustrated that by just removing the blood from the afferent uh, circulation to the kidney. In addition, we could have any number of hypovolemia. Hypovolemia, shown here as just a decreased flow to the kidney, can be from a few things. You want to remember the three Ds, diuresis, diarrhea, and dehydration. Any one of those three things are going to cause you to be hypovolemic. If you're diuresing too much, you're going to have low volume. If you're diarrheing, if that's a word, too much, you're going to have hypovolemia. And if you're dehydrated, you're going to have hypovolemia. So anything that causes a decreased effective circulating volume is going to cause prerenal azotemia a pre-renal kidney injury. The next thing I want to talk about is the intrinsic causes of acute kidney injury. What in the kidney itself? So like from a global standpoint, we could have a glomerulonephritis where we just knock out the kidney, okay? Glomerulonephritis. There are many causes of glomerulonephritis. You can see a kidney pathology lecture to be able to better differentiate between them. But just as a, as a class, as a whole, when you think of glomerulonephritis, you're going to think of a, acute kidney injury that's intrinsic. Additionally, you could have a renal tubular acidosis. You're still knocking out the kidney, but what's happening here is that you have one of two causes. One can be ischemic. Ischemic kind of ties back to pre-renal. We have a decreased blood supply and the kidney gets knocked out because it no longer can uh, nourish itself. Additionally, you can have toxic RTA. Toxic RTA is due to drugs. Anything that's nephrotoxic is going to cause toxic RTA. So if you get a patient and they tell you that the patient, um, you know, think about the patient that's like on chemo and is taking cisplatin. That's a nephrotoxic drug. Think about the patient that had a MRSA infection, started on vancomycin. That's a nephrotoxic drug. Think about the patient who maybe had some type of infection and was put on an aminoglycoside. That's a nephrotoxic drug. So any drug that you have a, a known side effect of nephrotoxicity can cause a toxic renal tubular acidosis. Okay. The other thing we want to talk about is interstitial nephritis. So when I say interstitial nephritis, I want you to think about kind of like an allergic reaction within the interstitium of the kidney. So there's a classic triad that you need to diagnose interstitial nephritis, and that's fever, rash, and eosinophilia, okay? Fever, rash, and eosinophils. And you see here there's like a mean eosinophil cartoon that's knocking out the kidney. This is classically going to be caused by things like penicillin, things like NSAIDs. So if you have a patient who's like a chronic gout patient or a chronic low back pain patient and they take a bunch of NSAIDs, you want to think about interstitial nephritis. Okay. If you have a patient who has constant infection and is always on penicillin, you want to think about interstitial nephritis. So the way that these questions are going to be presented to you on your USMLE or your Comlex is that they're going to frame the patient, allude to kidney injury, and you're going to be required to make the connection. Okay, so I've kind of highlighted the, how they'll do that, but I'll go through that again at the end. Let's switch gears and talk about post-renal causes now. So post-renal, we're talking about everything after the kidney, and we're really going to focus on the bladder here. So just generally speaking, this is going to be obstruction. Um, there's something knocking out the passage of the urine from the kidney down into the bladder, and ultimately it can't be excreted. So some causes of obstruction, any number of stones, anything like that. Additionally, if I tell, if let me give you an example. Let's say that there's a 76-year-old male who has uh, urgency and frequency. What are we thinking here? Well, we're thinking BPH, right? His prostate is enlarging. It's clamping down 
on that urethra, he clearly has BPH, and that is another cause of post-renal kidney injury. So again, you want to think about these in the context of the question. If they give you someone who's at massive, massive risk for MI, you would think about pre-renal. If they told you there was a chemo patient, you would think about intrinsic because they're probably taking cisplatin and that's nephrotoxic. If they give you a 76-year-old male with uh, urinary symptoms, you would think about post-renal. All right, so just kind of put these into different categories when you get a question. So now what we need to do, now that we've defined the causes of each of the three, is talk about how you make the diagnosis. So you have a high, you have a high uh, suspicion that it might be pre-renal, intrinsic, or post-renal, but how do you differentiate based on labs? Well, there's two important values we need to talk about, and the first is the BUN to creatinine ratio. In pre-renal, it's greater than 20 to 1. In intrinsic, it's less than 10 to 1. And in post-renal, it's a little confusing. It starts off pre-renal looking, but then it ends up intrinsic looking. So I think that what we need to do here is you just need to memorize the pre-renal and intrinsic one, but you need to understand conceptually post-renal. So post-renal, what happens is that originally the kidney's fine. There's a stone, let's say, in the ureter, but the kidney itself is fine. So the BUN to creatinine ratio is going to reflect a pre-renal cause because again, in a pre-renal cause, the kidney itself is fine. There's nothing wrong with the kidney. It can still do its job. But as urine backs up and moves into the kidney and you get that retrograde flow, the BUN to creatinine ratio will shift to an intrinsic ratio such that now there is kidney damage. So what started off as a pre-renal ratio where the kidney's fine has shifted to an intrinsic ratio where the kidney's not fine. Now that same concept is going to be used when we talk about the fractional excretion of sodium, also known as the FEN, the FEN A. So basically what, what I want you to think about when you hear FEN A, don't worry about it, it's kind of confusing, but just think about how much sodium is lost in the urine. In pre-renal kidney failure, you lose 1% because the kidney's fine. The kidney can reabsorb sodium, so there's only a 1% excretion of sodium. But in intrinsic, the kidney is damaged. It's spilling sodium. It cannot reabsorb it. That's why we see 3 to 4% in intrinsic. It's higher. You're losing that sodium because you can't reabsorb it. For post-renal, don't worry about the Fen A. It's very low yield, and I would be completely shocked if they asked you about it on your test. Now, here's our summary slide. Again, heart, kidney, bladder. Pre-renal, intrinsic, post-renal. Think about that. The etiology, usually pre-renal, is due to some type of hypoperfusion. The heart gets knocked out. There's renal artery stenosis. You're hypovolemic. In intrinsic, there's a true kidney injury. It could be glomerular nephritis, renal tubular acidosis, interstitial nephritis. Remember that RTA, or renal tubular acidosis, can be toxic or ischemic. Interstitial nephritis is usually caused by NSAIDs or penicillin and is an allergic reaction within the kidney. You see a fever a rash, and eosinophils. And then the post-renal, you're going to get obstruction. It's going to be a stone or BPH, something obstructing the outflow of urine. The BUN to creatinine ratio is going to be greater than 20 to 1 in pre-renal, less than 10 to 1 in intrinsic, and in post-renal, it'll be greater than 15 to 1, but really, it's a combination of the two, where it starts off as a pre-renal ratio and shifts to an intrinsic ratio if the, if the disease continues to run its course. And then lastly, the fractional excretion of sodium is 1% pre-renal because the kidney's fine and the kidney can still reabsorb sodium despite the fact that it's underperfused. But in intrinsic kidney damage, once that kidney itself is damaged, you can't reabsorb sodium. So it goes to 3 to 4%. All right, guys, that was a lot of information. I know. Revisit this a few times because it's definitely high yield and should go a long way for you. Good luck.